everybody. It's Missy Wolf with Center Stage Magazine, and we are coming at you live from the Lemon Bar in Cabanda, and we are here with Morgan Miles. How are you? I'm good. Hang it in there. How about you? <laughs> <laughs> the same. It's finally cooler. I'm so glad we're doing this now and not like 11 o'clock today. It yeah. was so warm. No, I mean, it's amazing how much this has cooled off, so... I, know, I just feel since, good. Just since you got here in the last hour, it's been it's yeah been so much better now than it was. So beautiful out here in this like it's just country. I love it. Right. It's so beautiful. So what have you been up to during this whole quarantine <laughs> madness, girl? I, I see you on the boat all the time, and I'm always a little jealous. I swear, just call me the female <laughs> Jimmy Buffett at this point. I'm just like <laughs> drifting away slowly. <laughs> the other day, I was like thinking about the songs he wrote. I'm like cheeseburger in paradise <laughs> like what you know I'm like maybe i just need to just drift off and do that but yeah i've go. just been hanging out on the boat we go water skiing every morning and it's, and granted you always want what you can't have because i'm just like the summertime is usually the busiest time we're you know in a van or traveling on tour and so um it's kind of a bittersweet thing yes i love the lake and everything but man i I truly wish that we had a balance. <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. And I'm pretty sure the fans would like that too because I know that they're tired of watching all the music just on their computer screens. They want to go to yes. a live show. I mean, I see it all the time. My friends are all upset because Ticketmaster keeps refunding them for all these shows they had scheduled yeah. even later on in the year. Yeah. And people are just getting really frustrated. They really want their live music back. <sighs> yeah. I mean, I just found out today that like a couple of the shows at the end of the month, we were supposed to play Chicago. Um, and then Atlanta and then Minnesota and obviously now they're getting rescheduled and it's just this like slow process right. because we, we have to stand around with question marks on our head, which is, is you know, challenging. Right. I'm like supposed to play this USO tour in Japan in September and I'm just praying to God that that one still happens because I just think it's really important for troop morale and I would love to yes. still go and um, be there for my country in any way that I can. So hopefully that one goes through. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, maybe if nothing else I could do one of those. I don't know, maybe like a stage it or something, and they just broadcast you on a monitor. No, no, I know. no I'm broadcasting. Just, I'm just saying worst case scenario. <laughs> but no, I, I know what you mean, because getting out there with people, and, and for us too here, I mean, we like going to the shows and covering these events. and It's the doing energy. these interviews. Yeah, it's so much fun when you're actually there. Yeah, I just feel like that's what we're all missing, is human connection and human you know, connection just leads to a lot of energy that we're all missing right now. Right. And I, granted, I think we will never take it for granted anymore, you right. know. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it sucks. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm staying positive. <laughs> yes. Okay, now positive. What What's one positive thing you've done during quarantine aside from your mornings with Morgan? <laughs> That was going to be my answer, okay, okay. Uh, but I, I mean, mean. That is a huge positive. The, the, the thing with that was. I started this mornings with Morgan to do gratitude for 30 days because we thought it was not going to be that long. We're on like episode 80, 85. And, but the thing is, I can see how much we all need it. Like I needed it for accountability so that I brush my teeth, that I like, I have a, I had to make a routine for myself because if I did it, <laughs> it was like, oh my God, I'm still in my pajamas. And so yep. I've, at least I got into that and I really had to stick with the gratitude mm -hmm. every morning, which I think has helped my mental health. It's like, and Absolutely. I can see that it's helping others. I've also started meeting, um, like, uh, like other people on social media, like the champagne diet who I love. She's like a nine time best selling author and you, I reached out to her just like hey I'm such a fan of you blah 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 would can I bring you on as a guest and she said yes so See, I mean it's amazing. just kind of cool just meeting some people in a different vein of music yeah. the other thing I did start is called women in wine crush Wednesday and we have a wine expert each week and then a different female artist that I like to feature and that's been really fun that's, and super informative exciting. I did not know that I know nothing about wine and I've been oh. drinking terrible wine <laughs> for a very long time. So tune in if you need, you know, some guidance. There it's super go. lighthearted and fun, but um, that's also <laughs> been just kind, like it's been fun meeting people in that way as well. Yeah. And so, so that's been positive. So have you discovered a new favorite wine now through that? Yes. Kendall 
Jackson, Ventner, Reserve, Chardonnay. See, that's a mouthful. Oh, Chardonnay. 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 <laughs> I was going to say Chardonnay and I. Um, I got all excited. But, yeah, that her and I go way back. Uh-huh. Like, she's my friend. She There's my a couple friend. that have been just amazing, um, amazing wines. And, and, and the, there's another one. It's a Corvina. Um, that's been good. And they're all under 20. Like, oh, see, that's all fantastic. All under $20. Yes. But see, that's how they get you. You think you need to spend a lot of money on wine, mm-hmm. but you don't. No, you don't. So follow her. Yes. Watch her. And I'll help you out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. So what else do you have going on? What do you have coming up? Because I know that the fans at home who absolutely love you, I mean, they already know what you got going on. But the, for the new people who are t- tuning in, like, what do you have going on that they can look forward to? So in January, um, I was finally able to drop my album called Therapy, which is a really (laughs) poignant album for right now because I think before COVID, it seemed like this was a pretty deep, heavy faith-based thing because of what I went through, really bad management situation. I really almost thought, like, I can't do this anymore. I lost my cousin to brain cancer. It was so much going on. And so, yes, the album is very empowering and and got a lot of spiritual to it you know um so what i wanted to do um and we started this prior to covid i wanted to make acoustic versions of the album too and we really me and scott reeves um he's an amazing guitar player he he and i went in and we cut really interesting acoustic tracks to it so um those are going to start coming out at the end of the month one by one and then um, I'm, ar- I'm already in the studio working on um, music that's going to be coming out January 2021 and all that. So I'm excited yes. for everything that we've got music videos, got a music video for Matt and myself coming out. Suffocate Me has a music video. So we've got content um, and it was all done prior to COVID. So <laughs> you're so you're lucky on that front because not yeah. everybody had that opportunity and they're kind of, you know, lacking in their content yeah. right now, and it's hard for people. But you've also been nominated for some awards recently. Oh, yeah. we got to talk about that. <laughs> uh, well, the NEMA Awards, it's it's a Nashville-based mm-hmm. um, industry type thing. And um, last year, I won for acapella, the official music video. And I got to open the show, which was really, really fun. Um, and this year, I was just really surprised. I have four NEMA nods <laughs> and... <laughs> Please go vote. It's fan based, so um, you just I think it's NemaDigital.com, but it's also on my socials. It'd be amazing for you to vote. Um, some are all genre, which is really cool, mm-hmm. um, and some is country based. But yeah, I thought that was yeah. it was a nice little surprise because yeah. I'm like, wait, we're still doing that this year. <laughs> exactly. I know when I saw the post, I was super excited because number one, hands down. You are one of the most powerful and my favorite female vocalist ever. Um, I adore you. My And, okay, wait. You guys at home, my mom is not a huge music fan. Like, she likes her people. She likes her Barry Manilow. She likes her Michael Bolton and her B.J. <laughs> Thomas, okay? But she doesn't like a lot. And she watched the show, the f- first show we ever did at the 615 Hideaway. Shout out to the Passamanos. Um, 615 Hideaway, we love you. Um, she watched the first show that we did together and when i got home she had you know obviously was done watching and she was like who who was that (laughs) and oh my gosh she was amazing i loved her i loved every song that she sang and my mom is such a critical person she just doesn't like what she doesn't like and she loves you to death so i wanted to tell you that yeah i feel so honored she's she's right next door so we'll have to say hi to her later. <laughs> she she was bragging earlier she was like all i have to do is open my window and i get to hear the whole show tonight it was great um but and if you hear the nature at outside you guys i keep hearing these i don't even know if they're locusts or cicadas or what these things are oh god hopefully not cicadas i i don't know but i know whatever was going on just a second ago was really loud so i don't know if you heard it at home but if you saw me kind of chuckle that's why. That's life. That's right? nature. But now Can't I control think, it. I think we all need to hear you perform now. Are you ready okay. to go? Okay. Yeah. All right. She's going to sing for you guys, so hang tight. Okay. Well, I think, should I start with, I have a feeling, well, okay, wait. I'll start with Therapy because that's the title of the album, but this is going to be the first acoustic track that comes out. Whoop, there goes some water, but that's okay. That was probably my fault. Um, but, um... 
Yeah, so this is therapy. You can pre-save it now. When the needle falls down on the vinyl And the grooves don't even move me When I can't turn off my mind You flip a switch and get me high Four walls of silence can be so lonely but you're lying next to me I'm safe as I can be I can let go, yes And fall apart Cause you're my rock Strong stone Where my world is out of control The way that you heal me When I'm down to death The proof in the whiskey don't fix me And a buzz ain't enough to numb reality And worrying's like walking around waiting With an umbrella when there ain't no rain And Lord knows I can be my worst enemy, yes But you Make me love myself in a way that I never felt I'd be lost if you had never found me That's going to be coming out in a month um, acoustically. So I can't wait to hear what you guys think about that. Again, go pre-save on any of the platforms for the DSPs, Spotify, and all that good stuff. Um, so, I... Okay, this song is called Suffocate Me. And this song, it was really just this this whole idea. Suffocate Me sounds super creepy. I get it. <laughs> It's a creepy love song. No, it is a love song, but it's truly this raw emotion about like the head and the heart and how those two things fight all the time. And so this is just a very honest, raw, emotional song, kind of how those two things collide. So if you're single, hang in there. I get it. <laughs> Here's suffocate me. You're my freedom, my space No one to get in my way I can go when I want to go It's 
stay when I want to stay in my freedom, my space. But tonight, baby, I don't even mind. I want you all over me. So take me now, lay me down to the sound of my last heartbeat. Cover me in your kiss till I can breathe, baby. Suffocate me. Mm. I know you're gonna mess me up. Now be the victim of your touch. Let your whisper hold me down When the morning comes around And I know you're gonna mess me up But tonight, baby, I don't even mind I want you all over me So take me now and lay me down To the sound of my last Heartbeat Cover me in your kiss till I can breathe Baby Suffocate me So wrap me up so tight Till I see the light Till your body becomes all the air I Cause tonight, baby, I don't even mind I want you all over me So take me now and lay me down To the sound of my last heartbeat Cover me in your kiss till I can breathe Baby Suffocate me. I feel like I was getting bit <laughs> halfway through it. <laughs> Mosquitoes. Um, all right, next song. Well, this song is called Empire, and um, I think it's just a really great song for right now um, of having to hang in there. We are all empires. It's up to us to... Um, find that strength within ourselves and we're definitely being challenged right now and this is what that song is about this song is about keeping our heads up so here's some positivity <laughs> Sometimes you gotta walk through the fire not around it Sometimes you gotta wade through the flood just to find it. But you'll find it when the world tells you no. You find it in the strength of your soul. Come on, build it up, build it up. There's a champion.
champion and everyone an empire. How's everyone doing at home? Has everybody got a drink? It's Friday night. Everybody hanging in there. I, f I know how you feel. So I'm like, do we do? Um, so I have a, a new song that I haven't released yet. And I really, I wrote this. Um, I had this title called Woman of My Word. And that's the one thing that I feel, you know, that we can hang on to and this song has really just just taken on so much meaning for me so um you know i i guess like why i wrote it was someone was trying to tear me down and all the wrong like for all the wrong reasons probably to make themselves feel better and I wrote this song as like, no, I'm not going to let you tear me down. So to anybody that's ever been in a relationship or any type of relationship that has just torn you down and you kind of lost yourself in that, the one thing you can keep is your word that you to yourself, your self-love. And so this was kind of why I wrote it. My little love note to myself when I was <laughs> struggling. And now I can laugh about it. So this is called Woman of My Word. Hopefully I'll be releasing it. We've recorded it, um, so hopefully I'll be able to release it. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe January or something. So here's your snake peek. That he needed to break me to build me back up. Just trying to change everything he said he loved. All the time he spent talking, I guess he never heard me when I said I'm a woman of my word. He took all my secrets, held them over my head. I trusted him to keep them, used them against me instead. Spent his energy controlling me, I guess he never learned. Cause I said I wouldn't take it, and I'm a woman of my word. Not afraid of lonely, not ashamed of who I am. I know what I deserve, and I know that it's a better man. Cause damn, I know my worth. And one thing's for sure, I won't take any less. Cause I'm a woman of my word. Damn right. <laughs> Said you knew what you were doing. Told me that you change. Said that if I came back, it wouldn't be the same. But I can't keep on forgiving and keep on getting hurt. I made a promise to my heart, yeah. And now I want it on my word. Not afraid of lonely, not ashamed of who I am. I know.
best verse right here. This is the redemption part. <laughs> Still gonna build that house by my parents' place. Still gonna have those kids. Gonna use those names and all the plans we made for better or for worse. I'll be doing them without you Cause I'm a woman of my word I won't take any less Cause I'm a woman of my word Yes <laughs> I knew you'd like that one So you thinking one more? What's everybody saying at home? So used to Oh my gosh, so sorry. Oh, Connie, I hope you feel better soon. Hang in there. We're praying for you. <laughs> the sneak peek. Um, I'm wondering if we should throw in a cover of some sort. It's like, why not? Are they having some requests? Um, oh, I love you, Brandon. Thank you. Um, well, we could... Oh my God, well, that's the song we wrote together. Um, I wrote this song, but I, I can't remember all the words, you guys. <laughs> we wrote a song together during COVID. That's another positive that we did. We wrote a song called Contagious during COVID, but it, it's a spin on love is contagious. Let it be contagious. If love is going to save us, let it be contagious. And I we're now we're in the middle of now recording it, so it's going to be so much fun. It's so I can't remember all the words. I should, but guys, silence. Okay. This is uh, this was another like sometimes the only hey you know what sometimes that's the only way people listen. I wrote this hook because I just felt so defeated. Like no matter what I say, it wasn't gonna matter, and I was like, silence is the only way you'll listen. And so that's how this came about. Um, and, and honestly, sometimes I really feel like that's what it is. I think there's a lot of that going on right now. Or not. Here we go. I could call you every name. You wouldn't hear a word. I could slap you in the face. And you wouldn't get hurt. I could tell you what is wrong. But you always be right. I could try to prove a point. But it ain't worth a fight.
Did you make me feel so small? So quietly I'll make you fall. I could scream and keep on kicking. But silence is the only way to listen. Oh, 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 oh. I'll make you fall. Let this be my loudest cry. Let this be my last cry. I have your thoughts taken over your mind, over your mind. Silence is the only way you listen. Ooh. Ooh. There's silence. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I gotta play Sanctuary. Brandon agrees. Brandon agrees? Okay. So this is my last song of the day called Sanctuary, and this is perfect for Connie sitting in there scared and dealing with COVID among so many others. Um, Sanctuary is a song about the deep love of one another. It's not about the building. It's more about this love and connection, and um, that's what – we all need the most right now is helping one another um, get through this together and with love. Love is what's going to conquer all. As cheesy as that sounds, it's the truth. And there's not a lot of love going around right now. So this is what that song means, Sanctuary. I wrote it about my parents, their love for me, and how much I love them and how they're, they're, they're my rocks. Quarantine, who am I with? I'm with my parents. <laughs> Love you, Mom and Dad, if you're watching. Um, but, uh, yeah, that's what this song's about. I hope uh, go listen to the production. We have a choir and, and everything, and um, it's just hopefully will uplift your soul during this time. Here we go. Some days it's hard to believe in love at all, yeah. But I know salvation is real when I'm in your arms. Even in the darkest night, you shine a light and I know inside. Oh, Storms coming my way, yeah, yeah. Uh. You by my side, boy, I know I could walk through the rain. Clouds can't hold back the sun. You will run when I come up. around me yeah yeah 
church. Wow. <laughs> Great. that I'm like going to mess everybody's <laughs> names up. So I just decided that I needed to bring this up here. Okay, first of all, Brandon, yes, you do need to have her on your show and you need to do an interview with her and she needs to play music. I agree. Let's so, do it. Yes. Um, but Anytime. Right? Um, everybody is just so excited. Um, Tina wishes this, pers this concert was in person, but this Me is too. great too, hopefully soon. But I have a little surprise for you because Renee... Kochi, if I'm pronouncing your last name right, I'm, I'm sorry, said, can you sing the chorus? And he typed it out for me. For which one? For Contagious. Contagious. We'll rise above the stillness with all the faith and hope within us. We can pull each other through. Um, See, it's all written. I don't know if you want to do that or not, but it was written for you. Um, let me... Um, it's... I'll do this part. The hook is, if only love is going to save us, let it be contagious, let it be contagious. Song. See? Okay. So, I will learn it. <laughs> I should have brought a cheat sheet. Well, so. when I saw that Renee put that on there, I was like, I can't get back up there and not, <laughs> you know, I had to do that. Um, but you have so many fans that are watching. Some of your fans were thinking they were going to miss your show, and they're so excited that they got on there. Yay! So, Good, guys. I'm, I'm so happy everyone was able to tune in. Absolutely. So as an artist, knowing that, you know, it's hurting you to be out on the, not being out on the road as well, what does it do for you when you get to see those messages from fans that even seeing you online is something that they love and look forward to? Honestly, I think every artist needs the validation that you guys care and feel genuine about the music we put out so without having that energy and connection at a live show this is what we have at this point so you guys are honestly the kindest souls on the planet and you're so sweet and like i said every morning just being able to interact with you is giving me some sense of sanity that you know there is still this sort of connection um and everybody's just being so positive around like as far as everything that we've had, of course, we have some trolls on the live stream sometimes, but um, those trolls just make us that much more positive. <laughs> right? I mean, I feel like you've achieved a higher status once you get trolled. <laughs> oh, God, I don't know. Because about that. it means you're important enough for people to actually care to do that. Because there's a lot of people out there who would love for anybody to get on there and comment. And I'm I'm saying this honestly, like I know people <laughs> who do live streams and they maybe have five or six people watching and they would give anything to have more people watching even if it's just, you know, a troll, a troll because it means they're getting out there. They're Oof. getting their stuff out there. I don't know. They say some weird comments. They, they do. <laughs> but, you know, you can go back and delete them or hide That's them. That's what we whatever. do. We just go mute. <laughs> yeah. I, d I don't like negative comments. I don't think there's any place for them. There's no There's not. For them. It's just, Scroll it's just passive aggressiveness yeah. that we don't need in our little sphere of positivity right, we're right. trying we're trying to stay as positive as possible obviously it's like this like today was tips about like how to help with high anxiety during right. this crisis so you know we're we're getting real with it not yeah. every day is going to be good no absolutely not and you know not every comment is going to be great <laughs> either um have speaking of that i have to ask you because i have kind of a funny story but i took it to heart when people would put negative comments on my YouTube channel and it like, Oh my God, it like hurt my soul. And these people don't know me. And I'm like, your words are cutting. But when you go back and you really think about the comment, it, it made me laugh. Yes. So do, have you had any of those moments? Cause I'll share mine with you if you want, but I mean, yeah, we have, um, honestly, I remember it was so long ago, a couple of years ago, there was somebody. And I think after that point, I just, I was over it because it was the so toxic and negative. And I just, I was like, and you are like some old man, like, I mean, you go to the profile and you're like, what the heck? And so <laughs> you're just like, you know, at the end of the day, this is what I always say. I'm just so glad I'm not that type of person right. that would take the time out of, to go out of their way to say something rude 
because that's only going to hurt them more yeah. in their life. So um, I just laugh because I'm like, I'm just so glad I'm not you. <laughs> right. And I've, I've had to learn to do that. But the, the one comment that got me, I kid you not, it was this, I thought it was a great interview. It was fun. And this person said, piss off woman and buy yourself a case of wrinkle cream. And I was like, a case? Like not even just one, just just a case, a whole case. And when I did what you did, we went and looked at the profile page, and, and then it was like, mm -hmm. got it. I understand now. You know, you know it, one time this one was, and I can't remember exactly what was said, but I just sang the national anthem, um, and it was telecasted for the NASCAR. And yes. most of the comments were good. Of course, there was like three or four that was like you should have had a soldier sing it or I, I did too many, whatever. And I pretty much stick to the anthem pretty, there's one place and it's like, Oh, say he does. And it's like, that's the only riff I ever do. But to me, I'm just like into it. And like, Somebody was going off about that. And I that night, I just had to, like, just turn it off because I was like, you know what? It just got broadcasted to so many. Yeah. And um, I just had to know that haters are going to hate. <laughs> they, they are. And you know what? And I had so many amazing good yeah. comments. And then why am I focused on, like, the one shit talker? Exactly. Talk so. Exactly. And that's why, like, for me, it was really, really hard for me because I thought, why are you being mean? Yeah. Like, why? But. I, I had to turn around and figure out how to deal with those and laugh and, and all that. But, um, man, you have such an amazing voice. I don't even know how anybody could get on there and say <laughs> anything negative because that's just – that's a sin. Like, you you are so powerful, so gifted, so extremely gifted. Like, oh gosh, I don't think you. there's a lot of people who have as much talent as you do. Oh I mean, it, You're it, making me blush. <laughs> but but <laughs> seriously <laughs> – no, but seriously, you, you, you bring it all with you and you can, you can play. You don't have to bring somebody with you. And that's not something that every artist can do. Yeah. You know, my guitar teacher, I'm so happy. He, he was tough on me. I was the only girl in my studio in Williamsport, Pennsylvania, Dave Brumball. And he's still such a huge mm -hmm. mentor to me. And um, he made me learn the blues and he made me do all these things because um, he knew where I needed to go. And what happened was my soul became an extension of this guitar to understand how to marry the two. And it, it you know, it didn't come naturally to me that well at first until right. he really started to connect those dots for me. Um, and, yeah, I don't know what I would do if I wasn't able just to sit down and mm -hmm. write out my thoughts. And that really why I got into guitar was... I think I needed to write songs and, you know, of course the first ones were pretty crappy, <laughs> but I, I was in middle school writing songs, you know, you're like, Oh my God, it's so hormonal. Um, and <laughs> like one of my first songs was called everybody hurts. Like, <laughs> oh my like so emotional and deep for that age, but right. whatever. Um, so yeah, I'm really, really glad. Um, I learned how to play guitar because yeah. um, it has definitely been a beneficial thing as a writer, yes. but also as a performer, for sure. Yeah, you don't have to worry about trying to find somebody to do a gig with. You could just go and do it yourself. Well, now we can't do that. Well, we gotta, okay. No, no, this was so funny because, <laughs> you know, I saw I have friends that's a duo, and but it's one plays and one doesn't. So they're socially distanced on stage, and it is a sight. It's just odd because, you know, oh, like, well. this should be, like, but they're socially <laughs> so weird because like, why are they so far apart oh okay yeah i'm not in like why <laughs> because you know what i mean like, i know it's like they were together prior to walking to the venue but whatever i weird see, time i i'm right there with you um okay so tell everybody at home who's oh. watching who doesn't know where to find you <gasps> because we have all kinds of pages with all kinds of viewers so tell everybody where they can find you for for more great stuff because you're amazing that would be awesome. I mean, right now, if you can follow people and just support and be engaged, it's, it's huge. You know, it doesn't cost you anything. But my website is Morgan Miles, M Y L E S Live dot com. There's some yep. bundles being sold from therapy. I'll autograph whatever you want. I have handwritten lyrics, all that. But then also um, Morgan Miles Live, all my socials. That's where I'm at yeah. Twitter, Morgan Miles Live, Instagram, Facebook, Morgan Miles Live. So. So she's easy to find and there's no excuse. No excuses. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, that's going to do it for us live at the Lemon Bar and Cabanda with Center Stage Magazine. Morgan Miles is amazing. I'm your host, Missy Wolf. Until Thank next time. Guys.
We'll see you soon. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Love you guys. We love you. <laughs>